Hi, brother sewing and crafting family. Welcome to uh, the party for the week, right? Yesterday was Memorial Day, so we were all off, hopefully enjoying the day. I'm Angela Wolf. And I'm Mae Flom. And we have a really fun show for you today. So pop in, say hi. Um, if you've never been here before, say where you're from because you never know your neighbor might be sewing, crafting, or the season fishing next to you, <laughs> which is what I'd like to be doing right now. Summer has finally hit Southwest Michigan and I haven't switched my system over in my building for air conditioning. So I've got this fan, like trying to do a Farrah Fawcett thing or something today. I don't know, <laughs> but if I pass out during the show, it's just cause it's like 85 in here, but uh, that's all right. <laughs> May, did you do anything exciting or anything over your um, extra day off this weekend? You know what? I felt like there wasn't it. Well, there was wasn't an extra day off, just because there's so you know there's always so much to do and so many projects. And for me, the weeks have kind of just kind of blended into. It's just always you know there's just kind of always the routine. But yeah, we did we did have some nice. I mean, it's hot, but it was nice to just kind of do some yard work and hang out around the house. Yeah, I agree. We, uh, Wynn and I just had some veg time. He's doing much better now, like back to his normal self, which is good. And um, yeah, ready to get back. So today you have the cutest project. So in case you guys missed this last week or you're new to the party, <laughs> we are live on the Brother Facebook and YouTube page. The brand ambassadors have taken over the Brother um, social media for some fun shows for the last few months. You can go back and watch old episodes and we have more coming to you. But this week, the theme is quilting. And it kind of initiated because of Mr. Domestic when he was on a few weeks ago. And I made my first quilt block ever. Here we go. Oh. And now I need to figure out how to take this pattern, not this exact piece, but this pattern, and incorporate it into a garment before Thursday. So tomorrow I'm going to show you I'm going to sew along with you while I do this. And so the whole week is quilting. So you had a great idea as well. So go ahead, May. So there's a lot of, if you don't already know, the Scan and Cut, and we'll look at some of them in a minute, but the Scan and Cut has a bunch of built-in patterns that are for sewing, that have the little seam allowance in there, and you cut them out with your fabric, and then go and stitch it together, and you've got quilt blocks, you've got patterns. It's a, I think it's a lot of fun and they're really cute. Now, obviously we could get out our fabric and do that. But what I'm doing today instead is I got out my paper and I went in and pulled some of the designs and I am playing with using paper on those designs and creating cards or whatever you might want. I'm actually, and this is another one we'll look at. Um, this one is going to be a scrapbook page element for a trip to Hawaii. It's all little sea turtles. Let me see so that closer. Fun. That is so cute. Oh my gosh, it is sea turtles. Yep. <laughs> Super it's cute. sea turtles and they're su and I hadn't even ever seen that screen. I had never gone that deep into the pattern. So I hadn't even realized it was that section was there. So, so just to ask everyone that's watching, when you mentioned this last week, I never paid attention to that section either. In fact, I found a lot of things in the Scan and Cut I never knew was there, uh, designs and stuff that are built in. So those of you that have a Scan and Cut, just make a comment. Did you even know these quilt blocks were in there? Because I had no clue. <laughs> Everyone's saying cute sea turtles. They are, it's, and I, when I found that, the whole section kind of reminded me of Hawaii, the whole page in there, and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I didn't know this was here. How did I miss this? I'm in this machine all the time. That's funny. All right. So do you want to show us? I'll bring your screen up if you want to show sure. us. Sure. So let's go. Yeah, let's go to the scan and cut screen here. Okay. There we go. Okay. Oh, I so like so here's what I'm showing you here. Okay. So some of these patterns, and this is my warning to you, because you just need to know this going in. Um, some of these patterns, you can see that these pieces are not very pretty <laughs> as far as making a design. They're not the prettiest. The reason is some of these patterns are designed. So like this is a perfect example. This is designed to be cut out of fabric and then sewn. So this is giving you when it cuts, it's cutting out your seam allowance. Like it's cutting, it's cutting out, assuming that you're going to stitch these all together and make your quilt block. So as you can see, it, if we are just looking at this going, oh, well, you know, are we just making our pretty paper, you know, our pretty paper sunflower design? That's what this is. It's kind of a sunflower. Um, and like this and like this, 
it's not going to work with paper. So there are a few designs that if you're looking at them to do paper, you're going to want to look closely. And I show you the physical version of it so that you can see what I'm talking about when we go in here. Okay, so oh, down here on the second page. May, we can see your screen perfectly. Yay! SDX225. This is the SDX225. So down here in the screen, if you go down here, there are some interesting different designs. And this one right here, the blocks one, there's all these different blocks. So I always thought that these were the designs to pick from. But watch what happens when I click any one of them. That's a whole nother screen. For some reason, oh. I had always assumed that there was just seven quilt blocks. But there's not. There's a ton of different ones. So you can go through and pick the one that works for your project. This is the one that I cut out that I just showed you. And what you're going to see, so when you go through a pattern like this, all the different pieces, when you click on them here, it highlights which piece that is that you're looking at. Oh, that's nice. Which is really, yeah, it's really nice because I will tell you there are times in these multiple piece patterns where maybe I only want part of the pieces. Maybe I don't actually want like this one that does all the little bits on the outside. Maybe I don't actually want that. Maybe I just want this design. Maybe I just want the design without the circle part. Maybe I just want it on a square. So if I didn't cut, where was it? Those guys, then it would be. So there's a lot of different alterations that you can make and you can pick whichever piece you want. And when you do, it's gonna tell you the height and the width that is showing you is based on you making this, you know, whatever size you said you were gonna make your block, it's going to alter, which is awesome, no math. It's going to alter the sizes of each piece based on what you said. So this is what I'm gonna show you. So it's gonna need four of those for the pattern and it automatically does all of this for us. So we don't even have to think about how many do we need. But what happens here, let's see, here we go. Let me see if I can show you this or not. Yeah, you can see it. So do you see that there's like a very pale line just inside the black line. Yeah, we see that. That is not going, oops, I'm pushing the wrong one. Let's see, this is the one I wanna push. So what that is, that is not going to cut. That inner line is them showing you where you would be stitching. The outer line is what cuts. So here you can see what it cut for me. And if so, if you're trying to do this out of paper, you're going, well, wait, I don't understand this is, not pretty, this is not you know what I was looking for. No, this is the shape that you would want, that this is the shape you would want your fabric to be if you were then going to stitch along and make it all pretty. So I show that to you because that was that is one of the things that have come up before and people have gone, okay, well, what you know, what's wrong with this machine? Why isn't it cutting the right shapes? Well, it is, it's just that those are, so all of these are very specific for um, fabric. However, some of these designs in here, what you're going to find, we'll just pick this one just, just because this one, so like a shape like this will be just fine because all it's going to be is a diamond with just a slightly larger diamond than what it would have sewn. So something like this would cut out of paper just fine because it's not going to be, you know, like a strange, a strange new shape with new curves and square corners where you expected a point if that makes sense guys so yeah, that does. i know it's one of, this is one of those things where it's like am i really going to show you guys this yes because i had to remind myself all of, of all of this yesterday so then back here i went a little fast there back here next to it is this one <laughs> may i have to just say okay how many people's dogs are barking my ring doorbell just went off <laughs> Oh, you got to love live shows. Oh, <laughs> Sorry course. about that. So over here, this is where, so this one, and I didn't even know we had a birthday cake in here. That is so darn cute. So over here, there's a bunch of different ones. And look, there's all the different little numbers with the little candles. So you can do birthday stuff. There's so many things you can do in here. And then this one is the one, and if we have time at the end, I'll show you how I did it. But this is the one where there's the sea turtle design. And the thing that's interesting about these and we'll get it, and if we have time, we'll get into it. The only line that cuts is the outside line. 
Oh, I like that. The inside lines don't cut. The inside lines draw. Oh. So oh. the inside lines all on here were drawn with a pen. And we did a whole show about this, what, two weeks ago. So if you guys want to go back into the archives and watch the whole show on it, I recommend it. That's so, so much fun. So the inside lines all cut and I used, a, or excuse me, drew and I used a watercolor pen. Then the outside lines cut. So this is a pattern that has both drawing and cutting available. And I'm not sure because I didn't try it if the draw lines would also emboss or do other things. I didn't test it all out. I ran out of time. I was having so much fun, but we'll go back to that. <laughs> We'll go back to that if we have time. For our main project today, we're over here. Look at all these cute flowers. So many cute flowers. I forget all these flowers are in here. And cute little patterns. And I think a lot of these would be really fun in vinyl. You could get really little details. We really do really cute vinyl things. Not, <laughs> I see Lisa says she's not utilizing her scan and cut enough. I know, I felt like I was looking at this going, this is your job. How are you messing this up? Exactly? <laughs> you don't know this is here. So this is what I'm going to do. Oh, that is super cute. So what you're going to do is pick your size. And I want a width of five and a half. And I'm going to say, okay, now we've got a lot of pieces here. So the easiest way that I find to do this when it's small and it's all going to be the same and I want to cut it all at the same time is just start at the beginning and add. And then you just click add. And the, the only trick is just remember where you were. And I just keep going as long as it's the same color. And you can see how it keeps lighting up to tell me, yes, May, that's the same color. I'm just gonna keep clicking on add and going along with the same color. Let's see, we're there. I think I got one more F, there we go. I see just a couple of things, just to remind you guys that you can share this to your timeline. I know some of you said, can I watch this over again? Absolutely, we're live right now, but uh, the replay will be available. You can share it to your timeline or come back to Brother and watch it, whichever you would prefer. So over here in edit, you see how I've selected them all. I'm going to press this button which just means it's going to unify it into treating it as one item. And the reason is I don't wanna to have to move seven pieces. I just wanna move all seven pieces somewhere else. That's and then, so I much back, then I can go back into edit and click this button again and it ungroups them. And go back in and push that and ungroup them. As I don't, I don't need them to stay grouped. I just wanted them grouped to move them down. And then, yes, you guessed it, we go in and add some more. So I didn't actually cut all of the pieces on this. What I did is I went through and I picked all the pieces that I wanted. Okay, so then those four are the same color. And I'm going along and I like how, generally speaking, in these multiple piece patterns, they're keeping them pretty close, meaning the same color is all grouped. Not always, but a lot of times in these, and in this one especially. So all the brown, you know, all the wood parts for the basket were here. And then these specific petals that should be the same color were next, which I find really helpful because I'm trying to obviously figure out what colors to put where. So that, And if you're wondering why I pull these away from the top corner, the top corner is the default where everything goes when it comes in. So if I already know I want things to be a little different or I want things different colors and things, I'll go ahead and just move them away from that corner just to help keep my mind organized. Okay, so then there's those. And then what do we got? Okay, so now we got, we've got leaf. Okay, so then we get into all the individual leaves. Yes, lots of individual different leaves. And then the little dots. And then uh, that's the other one I'm gonna do is the little heart shapes. Perfect, okay. So now what I'm going to do 
is get my mat out. I'm going to scoot this over just a little bit. And we'll get out our mat. I see a couple of you asking questions about machines that we're not using today. And I will leave a phone number, but you should really call Brother Customer Support for that. So don't think I didn't see your questions, but it's just not related to what we're doing today. So call Customer Support. They're awesome at that. Okay, so I have my mat. And then what I'm going to want to do is get out my scissors because I can kind of eyeball off the scan and cut about what I'm going to need as far as paper. And I'm just going to start, let's see if I can move this over more. There we go. So I'm just going to start going basically just kind of looking at, okay, I think, you know, about this much paper should do it. And I think that that's really nice because I can utilize scraps. I can really utilize all the little bits and pieces that I have instead of having to worry about full sheets. Now I'll put one there. And then we need the brown paper. Let's see. Bear with me while I get the brown paper cut over here. Oh. Brown paper. Now, if you're thinking, man, that looks awfully big. It is awfully big today because I've got a 12 by 24 mat today. Is that the low tack mat? This is a low tack mat. It's brand. It's a new low tack mat. Yes. Thanks. Okay, and I'm just pressing load there. And then what I will want to do, oh, get that out of the way. So then what I'll want to do is actually go back and push this button right here. This is going to scan the mat. And it's going to tell me how good or bad I did with my scraps and my positioning. So I don't <laughs> ever worry. I don't worry too much about the exact positioning there. And it's going and going and going because that's the big mat. And we don't need the big mat for today, but a lot of times if you're doing, if you were working with fabric and making quilting blocks, you might want to be. It might work better. Karina, I did not see that email. Did you email it to me or message me? I'll go through my emails. I'm actually just weeding through them today, so I got to go see what you sent me. <laughs> okay, so we can see it here and we can see if things like the purple, I was way off on the purple. So I can bring those guys down here. And if anything is off, all we have to do is just move it in. Not a problem. And over here, I can see that maybe we'd be better off moving that a little farther. That guy is maybe a little close. But once you're happy with everything, it's cut time. Oh, and I'll go back or back on here. You can see it's showing you how random it looks. Everything looks so random on there. But it was all going to work out. So I didn't cut the leaves on this one, just because, as you can guess, assembly for that is very straightforward. It's glue it together. But I'm going to show you how, how we're going to do that or how I would do that. And then I'm betting. I'm betting we have time to show you guys that turtle, too, because that was, that's a lot of fun. Everybody's loving all the tutorials, May, that you give on the scan and cut. I've actually been, that's a big part of what my weekend was, was starting to work on prototypes because my scan and cut YouTube videos, now that we're not weekly anymore, I'm going to have more time to do weekly scan and cut tutorials on YouTube. So that'll be nice. And I just put her website, all of our websites, brother, uh, mine and May's down below. And so if you go to our websites, there, that's where you can connect with us on YouTube, Instagram, wherever. But she has some great videos on there you might want to check out. And it's almost done here. You can see it's just making its way through the list. But I will show you, we will cut a couple of the green leaves and I'll show you. Uh, in this case, I left it off for a reason, and I'll show you here. So um, these guys we can pop off there, and I will tell you that I find with the, the combination of the low-tack mat and cardstock, 
when I go to pop this stuff off, if I, I'm going to take this amount off, that'll be easier. If I curve them out a little bit, don't pinch it. You know, you don't want to fold it, but if you curve it a little, the corners will pop off. And then it's a little easier to just pop everybody off instead of, especially if you're me right now and going, well, shoot, I don't know, but I dropped my tool somewhere, my little scraper tool to help pull everybody off. Where is it? Well, if you can't find it, you can just kind of bend. <laughs> Man, that's all love. Just, I feel just, so much better. <laughs> What's that? Last Friday, I couldn't, when I was doing the apron challenge, I couldn't find my tools, my seam ripper. I couldn't find half my tools anywhere. Now, today I've been cleaning, and um, I'm finding everything. It was all in one spot. <laughs> oh, of course. Okay, so I'm putting a new cardstock, the green cardstock down here. So this is what I want to show you. There's two different things you can do. And right here, if I push select the next part, what it's going to do is erase all those things that we just had on our screen, all these pieces that we cut and that are now over here on the side, it's going to erase those. It's gonna take us back to this because the machine knows sometimes when you're doing this, and I'm gonna say okay to a couple of these, but sometimes when you're doing this, for whatever reason, you may not want to cut all at the same time. For example, let's say I was making felt leaves, but fabric parts on some of it, but maybe cork, fabric on other parts of it. So if you were going wild with all kinds of different pieces and materials, you would need to cut those separately because the machine would need to be able to see all the different depths. It wouldn't cut well if it was all the same or if it wasn't all the same, excuse me. So it's always gonna ask you, and do you wanna cut the next part? And if you say yes, there you go. So I'm just gonna cut four of the leaves for us. Yvette said that's what happens when you're live. You can't find anything. I agree. <laughs> well, yeah, I know it's down here on the table, but am I really going to take a couple of minutes to search through everything on this table and see where it is? Probably not. And then if I push finish, it's going to take me here. Now, if I go back to add, it will take me to the pattern. And I'm showing you guys that because if for some reason, like let's say you want to cut more of those plus something else, you could just hit finish and it won't mess you up. It won't take everything away. So if you say, oh, shoot, I have more to add and I hit finish, don't worry about it. Okay, so we can assemble. Just scoop everything out of the way here. All right. Now my last, well, maybe not my last, but one of my last tips on if you're cutting out an intricate design would be to make sure you know how those pieces are supposed to go together, number one. And the, for me, I just go back in the machine and look. I just go back in the machine and say, okay, wait, where does this go? And like I showed you when we were selecting the pieces, and this is just double-sided tape. You can really easily look at it and say, oh, well, this goes here or this goes there. And you'll know which piece is which, and then you can assemble it. The other thing I would say is that you want to make sure that you mark down somewhere, especially if it's something really intricate. This one's not so big a deal because if these flowers were a little bigger or a little smaller, it's not going to ruin the whole design. But you want to mark down somewhere, what size did you tell it? Because if you get to cutting out your pieces and you accidentally, I don't know, there's a power outage or you accidentally turn off the machine or you accidentally escape out, you really want to make sure that you know exactly what you're getting into. And you don't want to have to start all the way over. That is never any fun. So I'm just going to glue these down real quick here. And I start, for this one, I started with the basket. I just did the basket pieces first. That's going to be so cute. It really, this is a fun one, and you could do this with any of them. Oh, and we're so proud of you. She cut her first heat transfer vinyl for her shirt this weekend. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Awesome. 
Irene, the machine does have blades. There's actually two different blades, one that we use for paper and one that we use for fabric. And I haven't had to replace mine hardly at all, but uh, it just really depends how much. Um, it does how, depend. I'll tell you that the, I have not replaced a blade since, you know, since all the pandemic started. And I'm doing these live shows every week and I spend about a day working on prototypes and figuring out what we want to do for the live shows and cutting a bunch of things before. And I still haven't changed my blade. <laughs> hey, Linda, to save this to your timeline, just you should be able to see somewhere to the pot bottom right. It depends if you're on a phone, but it should say share somewhere. Uh, click on share and then you should be able to share it to your timeline. If you don't see it now, as soon as the show is over, then you can. Okay, so oh, now we've Dana, got the basket. Dana, I'm happy to know that you didn't really send us a sad face because you can't be sad when you're making cards. She said her computer's being a pain. Don't you hate that? Everyone's oh, all in the wrong boat. Always, <laughs> that is never fun. And then I'm going to go in, and I feel like a cheater because I've got my, I've got a finished sample, so I don't have to look like, wow, she's going really fast. Yeah, because I, I've done this already. <laughs> you know, I, was, I wasn't I was going to say anything, May, because I didn't want to look make myself look bad. But I'm thinking, man, this girl really knows how to do this. <laughs> I do, in fact, know how to do this. But I also already did this <laughs> several hours yesterday. So, yeah. The, so if you're crafting and you're going, OK, but this is taking a lot longer than it did her on the show. Yeah, it probably will. At least the first time. If you do more than one. So if you wanted to do these. And that's another thing is it does give you control how many of these do you want to do. So if you wanted to make a bunch of them, let's say you were making, I don't know, invitations or thank you notes or something or Christmas cards, you could have said, I want 12 of these or I want four of those or however many you want of each piece so that you could actually produce them in kind of a bulk versus one at a time. All right. Now our little flowers. And I love this because it's all just like blue, blue, blue. And I mentioned that this would be great on vinyl, and I think it really would. The only thing you would want to do is you would really want to, when you go to cut out the vinyl, after you weed it, I would cut all the little bits of vinyl apart. And in fact, I actually have plans. So next week on my YouTube, there will be almost not this pattern, but one of these patterns that's really intended for fabric but with vinyl, I'm going to do one because it is kind of a specific process. That's going to be cool. Because you want to make sure that you, you want to make sure that you're doing it in a way that's actually going to work. Obviously you, you don't want to do something and then it doesn't work. Okay. So that guy would need a button, but it doesn't look like, Kathleen, look like that that's what it is. Kathleen was asking about the red. It's just double-sided tape dispenser. Yeah. It was double-sided tape. If you're going to get into paper crafting, you'll want to get yourself some double-sided tape. It makes things really fast and fun. Okay, and then you would add your little leaves. And I'll just add those two. And then what I did, just for fun, this is just like glitter. Well, this is, doesn't have glitter, but it's like glitter glue. I'll just put a couple dots on there. And remember, you can always go back in and make more, you know, you can always go back in and say, okay, but I want, you know, I want more of these leaves. I want to have, you know, a bigger bouquet. You could go in and make more. So there you go. So you can see. Well, oh, that's cool. adorable. Finished here. But it's super easy. It's really super easy. And you can see, I did different colors of the like glitter glue stuff. And I put some on the little flower here and I edged that with a little bit of glitter glue. I think so that much fun. You know, this is such a great project too, May, because as we talked about over the last few weeks, while everything is kind of in quarantine or whatever's going on, it's so nice. I have received so many cute cards, which, you know, kind of was like a lost art of people writing. These are such yes. an easy way to do that and customize it the way that you want to. Yes, absolutely. So there's that one, and it looks, like, it looks like we do... In the machine. We do have time, so I'm not going to... We have a whole show on this, so this is a universal pen holder. Uh-oh. Well, so what you want, then, if you're banned from glitter, what you want is glitter glue, because if you can't make... Well, I don't want to say you can't, 
but it would be very, very difficult to make a mess with it because <laughs> it's in there. It's in the glue part. So you're not actually like, I'm not allowed to have loose glitter either because it's very dangerous in my hands, but I can have it this way. And then I can get little bits of glitter without making too much of this. So this is a watercolor pen. And like I said, we did a whole, we did a whole show on it. And I have a number of YouTube videos about it too. And this is in the holder to make sure we get that at the right height. I'm going to show you this because this, this is going to be my new favorite thing, I think. Okay, so I'm going to push the home button just to get that out of there. And then over here, all you do is flick that up. And there's the blade. We want to remove the blade and put in the pen. And then watch how easy this is. This, this might be my new, I know, I always say that, but I always discover something. It's my new favorite or it's my forgotten favorite or something. <laughs> and then this is watercolor paper. This is just craft store watercolor paper. There's nothing special about it other than it's watercolor paper. And the reason we want watercolor paper is because it will, the effects will work much better. But normally I don't put the watercolor paper on a low tack mat, but this should be fine. We'll find out. So this is the one, this just, I love this. Look at this, there's a shell, there's a dolphin. We have all of these fun designs in here. And so all those black lines on the inside are drawing lines. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go, oh, no, that's too big. That's bigger than my paper. We don't want that. So we're gonna make it smaller. And then I'm just gonna center it. So I know my paper is going down to the eight and a half. So as long as this pattern is, oops. So as long as this pattern is not eight and a half inches tall, we're fine. We don't need to scan or anything. And we're gonna say, okay, and we're gonna select the draw first. Okay. And this goes real fast. So it's only going to draw the inside lines and it's going to look real funky. As you can see, you're like, wait, what? What are all these lines? And it just goes through and draws them all. And I was playing around mentally. I think this could be really fun for a hand embroidery project to do the lines in pencil or like a washable ink. Oh, that's a great idea, May. And I think that would be a lot of fun. And then go in there and so all, you, know, you would embroider on them and do all your things. I think it just I just think it'd be beautiful. So now that's a great be my idea, next obsession. Somebody just sent me a photo, and I don't know if it was in one of my magazines or what, but um of a beautiful like people are starting to make masks that are more fashionable. Yes. And since we're going to be stuck with those for a while. Uh, somebody had one where they had an outside layer that was all hand embroidered. So it was an outside layer. So, I mean, they still had the protection or whatever they had on the inside, but it was an embroidered that went over it. It was gorgeous. And they just did a blind uh, blanket stitch to attach it to their mask. It oh, was really that would be beautiful. That would be absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And what right. you have to, we're gonna, the don't stuff. move anything. Just put your blade back in. Okay. This is where, like, the easiness of this really has me excited now. So, and we're not going to do anything. All we have to do is this screen right here. All we have to do is press cut. So we first told it draw, and now we're going to tell it cut. Hi, Deborah. I see your message. If you message me on Facebook after this live show, I'll go and double check. Um, message me your email address and I'll double check that you have entered the sewing machine giveaway correctly and that you're in for the newsletter. So I'll check that for you. So now what it's going to do is it's going to cut all the cut lines. So. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Isn't that cool? But I think that would be just a great... Like you could do, or like an applique project or something. I don't know. There's so many things you could do with that. It's so quiet. You hardly even know it's cutting. <laughs> it is quiet. And now it's almost done because now I see it's working on the outline there. Cutting our, and I like that when the, so the draw lines, like on the leaves, it tends to put put the draw the leaf draw lines a little further than 
the cut line, which I like because that means that I don't have like the end. The end is not rough or anything. It's just right where you would want it. I agree. Fast and easy. Fast and easy. It's super fast and easy. And this kind of takes, we did a whole thing about drawing and watercolors and all that fun goodness. So this takes it to a whole new level now if we're doing draw part of the pattern, cut part of the pattern. Okay. So. The machine have more that, space. that mat looks monstrously huge. <laughs> it is a very big mat. I know it's. That. And there's that. Now I don't, let's see, what do I have down here? Hang on, look and see what I've got. Oh, I do. Huh, I almost always, so a paintbrush, a paintbrush dipped in water would make this watercolor. Or if you have a water brush, which is, it's a paintbrush, but you, Take the top off. I know we've talked about this before, but just so that's that's a paintbrush full of water. Then all that's doing is instead of taking your paintbrush and dipping it in water, the water is coming to you, which is super awesome. So all I did in the example that you saw was just some of it I was just kind of messing with. And what you're going to want to do on watercolor is if you're going to get like if I'm going to come in here and get this one color really really wet. If I wanted to work with traditional watercolors in a pan and come in here, I could keep adding and adding. But if I'm not, if I'm just working with a, a marker like this that kind of has a watercolor effect, you would want to let the paper kind of dry in between. You wouldn't want to just keep going crazy with color, 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 because you don't want to create them. And you don't want to create a mess or have the paper start disintegrating or anything like that. You want to make your art. But yeah, then you can just go and go and go. This is such a favorite. And so for those of you that didn't catch her, she, uh, she did a full tutorial on this on one of the brother videos a couple weeks ago. And you can go back and watch those. I'll show you at the end how to get to navigate those. But um, that I absolutely love that watercolor look. And I could definitely see doing that uh, with my nieces and nephews, too, as a crafting with them. They would love oh, that. It's so, it's so much fun. So what's, I'm, what I'm planning to do with this turtle is I'm planning on turning that into a scrapbook page embellishment. So I am planning on taking this guy and... Um, I don't know that I'll add more, but what I'm kind of thinking is, you know, oh, do I have a big piece of paper still? Yeah, this one will work. What I'm kind of thinking is put it on the, like put it on the edge of the paper, like half of it on Ooh. the edge of the paper and maybe the other half on the other edge. I don't know, we'll have to, I'll have to play with it and see. But we went to Hawaii just right before everything closed down actually, a couple of weeks. It was, seems like a world ago, but it was like, <laughs> the end of February we went to Hawaii and so I have pictures to scrapbook and I think this would be really really fun so that's yeah that's super oh, cool. cool you guys came up with a great theme this week or great idea to, to do this week and lots and lots of fun I I'm, posting, I'm posting in the comments someone asked where to enter to win the sewing machines we are still giving away sewing machines brother has donated 10 of them I think we've given away a total of four Maybe five, I have to double check, but that means there's still at least five to go. <laughs> and when you leave a comment during our live show, you're entered, and then there's also another official entry. So I just posted it. It says it's Brother So's posted it, but that was me, just so you know. <laughs> so May, there was a ton of uh, just some fun things on here um, about watercolor pens. You guys, you can message May or go to her uh, website to see where she gets some of these different products. Yeah, if you want to give me a message, probably the easiest way for you guys is if you just go either to Instagram Craft With May or Facebook Craft With May and just shoot me a message, then I can get you all I can get you all that info. Yeah, that's the easiest way. And then I saw a few more questions about people who had purchased Scan and Cuts. And if you have any questions on something with the dealer, just call a customer service. I think somebody from Brother Sews just posted that there. So don't think we didn't see those. Um, just not my department, <laughs> but we like to help in any way we can. So, um, and I'm just, oh gosh, there's so many, a couple of people here just 
just got this uh, machine. So congrats. I have to go find those designs. I, I saw when I, we were scrolling that this is in there. This is the one from Mr. Domestic that we yes. did. I didn't know that was in there. So I'm thinking of doing this tomorrow with um, denim. I'm thinking of doing this and adding it to a skirt. I'm debating. I haven't decided for sure. It's going to be a very short skirt because I don't, I don't want to sew for four hours. <laughs> but it could maybe be a bathing suit cover up, you know. Um, so that's my thoughts is to do denim tomorrow. But uh, you'll just have to wait and see. I, you know how that creativity goes? It just depends what mood I'm in tomorrow. Everyone's saying thanks, May. <laughs> These are so much fun. And I'm excited that we get to keep doing them. I think it's awesome uh, when we do more on using Scan and Cut for quilting. So if you want to check out May's YouTube page, the, she has a ton of videos on using the Scan and Cut. And we'll, we have more on here, too, coming up. But starting in June, we are the brother um, brand ambassadors. We've taken over the page for two months. <laughs> and we're just going to drop the show to uh, three days a week. I think it's three days or two days. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or something like that. Each week will be a little different. So all of your favorite people that you've seen on here will be back. It's just a little less frequently because I know everyone's going back to work and hopefully won't have as much free time. Well, hopefully you do have free time to sew, <laughs> but maybe not every day. <laughs> everyone's saying thanks. So May, um, I'm just making sure that no one has other questions for us. I know there's a little delay here. Will you have the video available for later? Yes, let me show you where to go for this. I'm going to share my page real quick with you guys because I had a lot of people asking this. We're on Brother So's um, YouTube page and and their uh, Facebook page. So if you when you go to Facebook, let me just show you where you're going to click to find all of the old episodes. <laughs> Somewhere on here. All right. Let me just see if I can share my page without having the live stream come up again. Okay. You ready? I think I got it. It's the right one. Hmm. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so this is where you go. On the brother page, if you look on the far left side over here, go to events. And what you'll see here are all the events that are coming up this week. These are all the ones every single day. And then some of these are shared from other people's pages. So Cindy Hogan has a live show on her own page that brother shares. I think some of you got a hang of that now. Um, I have one tomorrow on my page, but it gets shared to brother, but you can click here for all the information who's coming on. And if you look down here, here's all the past events. And so what I tried to do in those events is to put the actual video in there. So let's just say this was last week's video. Maybe not all of them. <laughs> you should be able to go in there and it'll tell you the date. And you'll see that May was on every Tuesday. So if you're looking for some of the past episodes, just go scroll through uh, Tuesdays. Right, May? Mm -hmm. There we go. So that should help. Oops, I just got rid of May. Wrong one. <laughs> Sorry, May. I was trying to get rid of that. Everyone's saying thanks. Thanks. Um, if you, Lisa wants to know your opinion. If you have a lot of the same thing to make, instead of using double-sided tape, can you use double-sided fusible and iron on the pieces? I don't know about for paper, though. So whether or not I have a lot, I do tend to use, like, I don't do a lot of quilting, but I do really love to do applique and different, you know, just different decorative things onto my sewing projects. So I do use some, usually use some kind of iron on because I don't know about you, Angel, but I find it easier if it's just tacked down. Mm -hmm, I do too. And I don't expect it to hold. I don't leave it there thinking it's, you know, going to stay there. But I use it as kind of a temporary adhesive just to hold it before I stitch it down. If we're talking about paper, um, I don't, I don't, no matter how much I have to make, because the double-sided tape is always going to be the least expensive by far. You can purchase full sheets of double-sided adhesive and back oh. your cardstock in it and cut with the adhesive already on it so that basically you're making stickers and then putting all your pieces down. The only problem you're going to run into that, well, there's two. Number one, those sheets are really expensive, so it's going to cost you a lot more money. Um, number two, you're going to wear your blade down a lot faster because it's a thick adhesive and it's going to really take power from the blade and dull it. Uh, and number three, I don't actually think it takes any less time to then peel off the backing to expose the adhesive and glue it than it did to just swipe a little bit. 
Now, the one thing I will do if it's little teeny tiny pieces, like wherever that went, there it is. So some of the tiniest pieces, what I did was just put a tiny drop of liquid glue and set it onto a tiny drop of liquid glue because I felt like that worked just as well. That's so there great. are, I mean, there's definitely options, but it's going to be kind of um, different. Uh, if you wanted to draw the cut lines instead of cutting, could you? So that's actually, that's a great question because on this yeah, pattern, that's a great question. on this pattern, because there are designated draw lines and designated cut lines, it no. When I hit draw, you saw that it only drew the inside things and it only pulled up the outline for cut. So if it was a file where it's specifically designed to only do one or the other, it's set. Um, you would have to, you could, but what you would have to do is cut one out and then scan it in and create your own cut file and then tell it to draw because it would then be your own data. It would then be its own file and it wouldn't be reading what it was already programmed to do. However, most patterns, most of the designs and most of the patterns are just one general line. Most of them, this is very, it's very rare. In fact, I didn't even realize the machine had ones that had multiple, you know, this is this and this is that lines within them. So most of the patterns you would, yes, be able to say, cut this or draw this or emboss this or whatever it is you wanted to do. Most of the patterns you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a trouble with that. But this specific one, no, you well, you can't, which kind of makes it, I mean, it's kind of, it's, I'm really excited about this. I want to play with that a lot more. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I saw a couple of people asking about fabric and that's what I'm going to show tomorrow is cutting fabric similar to this. But yes, there's a specific fabric uh, sheet that goes over the mat to cut fabric. It just makes that fabric stick really well. Uh, just a couple of things for fabric. There's different ways. You can also do a backing if you want, but a lot of times for garments, was what I'm making or cute bags and stuff like that. I don't want to have a backing on the fabric. So I will either starch it or do something to stiffen the fabric a little bit. And then when I wash it, it, it goes back to normal. So that's one thing, but I'll be showing that uh, mat tomorrow when I'm cutting my, my block, <laughs> whatever I decide to cut. Right. <laughs> Excellent. So everyone's saying, thank you. Thank you. May you always have such fun things. Oh, I'm, I'm, these lives are so much fun because we get to all chat and yeah, I'm not. So I know I had a couple of people ask me, well, wait, if you're not doing the brother weekly anymore, what, you know, what happens? Well, it just means I'm going to put more videos on YouTube. So <laughs> yeah. I'll just, I'll, then I might have to make it Tuesdays just, just to keep up with the theme of Tuesdays. But, um, yeah, so it just means that I'll be putting more because I usually put them on YouTube and what we've been doing is just doing, we've been doing live tutorials instead. So I'll just go back to more recorded, con pre-recorded content. And we still have a lot of fun shows for you guys too. So don't worry about that. Oh, yeah. just, uh, there, um, I think the next one I have on the calendar is a really fun one. Oh, it, I think we made it Monday at four uh, because yep. Monday, June 8th. So mark your calendar. Uh, for June 8th with May because it's National Best Friends Day. It is. And we're going to do Best Friends Crafts. That's going to be so much fun. Oh, I think I'm that's so going to be excited. fantastic. So mark your calendar. And don't forget, uh, if you sign up for Brothers Newsletter, they're sending out newsletters every Monday. So you go to brothersos.com, sign up, scroll all the way to the bottom, sign up for their newsletter, and they will be continuing to post these um, events for you. So if there's someone you like to follow or uh, information that you're looking for, you'll be able to know kind of what the categories are. So, all right. Well, uh, I, I'm i actually going to go over into my little crafting corner right now and we hang up before I, before I forget to try to figure out what designs I'm going to do with this. May, I'll send you a photo. I'm looking forward to seeing this. I can't <laughs> wait to see that. It's going to be very cool. I, I hope. If it doesn't, I always love to. I tune into as many shows as I can, even if just, I'm not live. I, most of them I don't make live, but I tune in as many as I can because you can always learn so many new ideas or remember something that you know already but you forgot about, and now you've been reminded and you can go off and create. Absolutely. Uh, oh, she just said, I, I love Tuesdays with May. I oh, do too. Thank you. <laughs> These are so oh. fun. Forgot to ask your question. Monica, how you you were answering everybody else's. You forgot yours. Uh, are the designs the same? Are the designs the same? Hmm. What do you mean by that? They're in the machine, if that's what you meant. 
And that was one of those wonderful spell check things. <laughs> and Angie's watching tonight. So I'll wait one sec just to make sure. Oh, you're welcome, Lisa. Nice to see you, by the way. I see so many people here that I usually see at events, and it's so weird to not be going to events right now. But uh, this is like our virtual event, wouldn't you say, May? Because we were just talking about that, how life is very different, but at least we can stay connected. It is very different. And I've been doing more, like I will, I've been doing some. So on my Craft with May Facebook, I do just general crafty um, Facebook lives once or twice a week now as well because it's so much fun to connect with everybody and you know create and connect and share ideas and get new ideas and it's a whole different world <laughs> it is it definitely is i just saw her oh yes and we started 1600 of pbs uh the it's so easy on monday for it that will be on saturdays for brother so's those will continue as well um, I just saw someone say, okay, so Monica said, are the designs in the machine and canvas workspace the same? No. So, yeah, no. No, because some of the, well, yes and no, some of the basics are in the machine and some of the basics are also available for free on canvas workspace. But for example, this machine, the, the SDX225 has a lot of designs that are exclusive to this that are not on, um, say, I think the, one of the other models or like the Disney model does have some designs that are not on Canvas Workspace that are not on the other models. Yeah, so and here's kind of both. For those of you that were wondering, Canvas Workspace is not in the machine. This is a separate website where you can go in here and design. You can see where my projects, some of my projects I've saved. This was from It's So Easy where I did a rhinestone design. Um, there's different pattern collections, uh, Disney, anything that you've purchased will show up in here as well. So this is a whole different website. It's not built into the machine, if that's what you're wondering. And the designs are different, but these are all free projects, a lot of them. Are these all free or just a handle? Those are all free. Yes, when you first go on, and this is one of my favorite places when I'm stuck and I don't know what to do because there's a video that'll kind of give you the, the gist of how to put the project together. And oh, yeah. it's, it's nice and quick, too. So it's not like, you you know, you're not going to be sitting there for an hour or anything. They get right to it and get the project shown. Here's how you make it. Oh, that's and awesome. Then, and they've got the files that you can download or send wirelessly to your machine. And a lot of times there will be really cool cut files that may, even if you don't say you don't want to make the exact project. Like I remember there was one with feathers and I didn't want to make the exact project they had, but I really wanted feather files. Oh, that's the cat, the coffee. I've done oh that gosh, one. That, that one's that really is, fun. That's really cute. <laughs> that one's really fun. The coffee cozy with the little kitty cat. And that one I cut out of felt. And I mean, that was a blast to make and did some hand stitching. And I just love the ideas. And sometimes if you're kind of stuck or you want somebody to kind of help you walk through a specific project, these are a great place to start. And yeah. yes, it's free. <laughs> that, we all love free. <laughs> um, it's free and they're putting out new projects all the time i know i'm way behind on my <laughs> canvas workspace projects that i want to go in and do yeah and it, and so when you get your machine you'll have an access code to access a lot of these different things in here too so depending on if you whatever you purchase if you get extra things and everybody's answering for us awesome <laughs> okay i just wanted to bring that up because i know that sometimes people were thinking that that was built into the machine so yeah, no. All right, May. Well, I hope you have a great week. Oh gosh, it's going to be two whole weeks. I'm going to miss you next week. I know. I'm going to miss you too. It's I'm sad. I'm, I'm sad. We're it's we're changing into a new a new new normal again. A new new normal. <laughs> but you never know if it stays. If 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 we end up getting stuck at home for another like three months, we'll go back. <laughs> that's that's true. I'm excited because there's a new fabric store in town and they open today. Oh, they're are you allowed serious? to open today, but they're also, it's their first day ever in business. They have the unfortunate timing, I guess, of opening, you know, in the middle of everything. But I'm so excited because I have not been able to see fabric in person in so long. Oh, just to touch the fabric. That's always everyone's thing. Like, we're so used to purchasing online. The fabric is so much better to buy in person, I swear. <laughs> and see, and I know I'm actually running low. I actually have an entire cubby in my fabric area that's empty. I've used so much fabric oh, on gosh. paper too. I have an entire, this much paper 
You know, I mean, that's a lot of paper. So I have like a ream size of paper space and I, and I have all this fabric space. I'm like, well, that's fine because then we can just get new stuff and that'll be fine. Hey, Crystal, yes, you go to Brothers... Go to brothersos.com. I think there's a link on their page for the YouTube to find it, but all these videos are on their YouTube page as well, plus a ton of other videos. So now you have that. Uh, the Disney collection is in the Disney machine. Can you purchase it separately too? I don't even know. So there's different Disney collections. The Disney collection that's in the Disney machine is exclusive to the Disney machine. However, there are different, there's like Mickey Mouse ones, princess ones, Toy Story ones. There's a bunch of different Disney collections that you can purchase. Um, and then you get your access code and access it through Canvas Workspace. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Oh well, yeah, I thread. I need to buy thread too. Thanks for that reminder. Oh gosh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Beverly just got her uh, scan and cut. Have fun, Beverly. Yay. Oh, it's Cindy, do you want to know if there's certain... Uh, weight of cardstock that you use? So if it's for cards or for scrapbooking, it's usually around 80 pound cardstock, which is just kind of standard, good quality cardstock. The water, I want to say the watercolor paper is around 100 pounds. Just, it's just a heavier, denser paper. But no, I don't specifically, I don't have anything that I do that needs a very specific weight. I just go kind of more by feel and I prefer a little, I don't like it to be thin and flimsy. I like it to be a little thicker, yeah. basically personal preference. I, that's a good tip though, because I would have, I mean, I would tell you what I use for fabric, but I have no idea for card. I've got a whole bunch of different colors back there though, that I've been like really experimenting with. I, as soon as the stores open up though, I'm going to get some watercolor. I could order Yay. it for me, <laughs> soon I hope. Well, May, have a great weekend. Hi to the family. And I look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks for Best Friends Day. I'm excited. We're going to have a blast. All right. See ya. Bye, everyone. Bye see you guys. tomorrow.